sampling requires certain sampling tools and you have to figure out what the minimum sample size should be in order to reach what you want to reach. In order to explain that I am using this normal distribution curve. Say the value, the mean value in your population is this one. But when you take a sample from that population, you may end up with a value here, or a value there, or even a value here. Those in the tail areas are very unusual. You have a 95% chance that they will be in the yellow area. So what we usually say, we have a 95% confidence that the value in a sample will be between this value and that value and we have a 5% confidence that they will be significantly different from that value. So this is called the margin, this distance. How far away from the mean do I want to be to capture 95% of the cases and say everything outside that range is probably significantly different from what I had in the population because of a certain treatment or whatever. So on the horizontal axis here are not specific measurement units, these are standard errors. But thanks to the standard error we can calculate where these margins are. So now we are going to use that information in order to calculate what the minimum sampling size should be if you want to reach a certain margin. And this is the formula you use in order to calculate that minimum sample size. It depends on the margin divided by the mean and the standard deviation divided by the mean. So here I put the margin ratio versus the mean, the ratio margin mean. So if the margin gets uh, larger compared to the mean, then you will see that the number of cases gets smaller and smaller to the right. Of course, because when you, when you accept a larger margin, then I can work with smaller samples. The standard deviation ratio versus the mean is plotted here. So if the standard deviation increases in relationship to the mean, I need more and more cases in my sample. So to make it more specific, I have in certain measurement units, I don't care what, that can be uh, uh, nanograms, kilograms, Celsius, Fahrenheit, whatever. Standard deviation of the population or in, in the, the comparison sample is 0.32, the mean is 4.15, and I accept a margin of 0.11. Again, if you make that margin wider, you will, you can use smaller samples. If you make that margin very tight, that means you have a very strict verdict on when you want to go into the significance range, then that margin will increase and your sample size has to increase. We use a Z or a T value of 1.96, that is the standard error range for a 95% confidence, which is the most common one. So what is the sample size? Here I used this formula to calculate what my minimum sample size would be. It's 1.96 divided by the margin divided by the mean to the power of 2 times the standard deviation divided by the mean to the power of 2. 32 cases. You have determined what you need as a minimum sample size. Then how do you get those samples of let's say 32 cases out of your population? It is not wise to do that by eyeballing, say I would like this one and that one and that one because subconsciously we will always create a pattern in the background. It's called biased sampling. So we need a tool that avoids bias sampling. And I am using the RAND 
function. In cell A4, I use the rand function. The rand function has no arguments. It's a volatile function. That means each time it runs again and again and again, and it creates a number between 0 and 1 with a 15-digit precision. So that means that if you have hundreds of cases, chances are, are very low that you have the same number for two different cases. So each time I press F9 now, it will recalculate those numbers, random numbers. Once you have done that, you are going to change those random numbers, because they are volatile, with their values. Otherwise they will keep updating all the time. Highlight everything there, copy it, paste it back into itself with a paste special, values. And now these numbers are final. If I do F9, they will not change anymore. So now I can sort them in order to get the top five or the lowest five. I don't care what. I'm going to sort them from A to Z or from low to high or from high to low. Doesn't matter what. And if you want a sample of five, you select these five plates. If you want a sample of ten, you take those ten plates. And there is no bias involved. This is, I think, the best tool. Sometimes you want a little different approach. You want 25% of the cases. That is not a good tool if you had just calculated your minimum camp sample size. But for other purposes, that might be your tool. So I need to select 25% out of 20 cases, that is on an average 4, but that will vary all the times, of course. Randomness gives you always results that may vary with a certain probability range under a bell curve. How did we get that formula? It is an if function. If the random number happens to be less than cell E3, which is 25% at this point. Then we put in there a literal plus, double quotes, plus, double quotes, otherwise nothing. Double quotes, double quotes. We copy that formula all the way down. And we get each time random samples. Another way of sampling is called weighted sampling. It is much more complicated, but sometimes you need that. If you are looking for specific cases in SAM, you want to give those cases a higher priority. So we give them a weight value. I did weight values between 1 and 4. That, that's really all you have to do in this case, but I also gave them a bar so I can see which one have a higher weight. How did I do that? I, I made a little table here. 1 through 4 is 1 plus, 2 plus, 3 pluses, or 4 pluses. And here I use the VLOOKUP function. So the VLOOKUP function says I am looking up this weight, C3, in that table range. The answer is in column 2. These are the pluses in column 2 of that range. And I want an exact match, which is 0 or false. So it just shows me the pluses once up to four times. Now we are going to create a weighted sample. I did that here. I want a sample of 10. But the ones with a weight 4 should be there in there four times more likely than the ones with 1 plus. And that's what happens all the time. You will see that you see a lot of pluses all the time. Each time I run this random series. How did I do that? In order to do so, I need a column before B that is going to implicate the value, cumulative value. For plate, the first plate, the cumulative value is 1. The next one is 0 plus 1. The next one is this one plus 4, 5 plus 2, and there finally we have the last one. So 
this is the cumulative series and we are going to say now in this column in f we are going to say give me a random number between zero and f and find the corresponding plate number so this plate number has many more chances to to get caught there than the previous one that had only a value of one so what is in here a v lookup function again it says look up the number e 22 which is the highest cumulative number times the rand function and look up that number in a3 through b22 in this range and find the corresponding number in column 2 and of course the lookup is not exact because there will be a number in between 14 and 17 etc okay. that's what it does so each time it finds new numbers there how did I get these pluses here again you don't really need them but just to show you that the four pluses are chosen more often than the one plus maybe not all the time of course there is always randomness but in general you will see much more four pluses so that that formula is a little more complicated for what we have to do now is we have to look up that 228 in this case we look that up into b3 through c22 in this range so we can find that weight number and then we look up that number in this case that was one we look that up in the table array here and we find the pluses in column two with an exact match and that's how we got that column and we copy that down with a double click and each time we do that it updates this is called weighting weighted sampling you need to know much more than this so I developed for you three CD-ROMs one is specifically geared towards scientists and a book that is geared towards scientists once you have worked through one of these tools you should be an expert in Excel. You can find them at genesispc.com.